क्वेश्चन नंबर सिक्स इज दर आर वेरी लॉन्ग यूनिफॉर्मली चार्ज थिन वायर हुज एंड इज एट पॉइंट जीरो कॉमा ए एक्सटेंस अलॉन्ग पॉजिटिव वाई एक्सिस द चार्ज पर यूनिट लेंथ ऑफ वायर इज लैमडा द इलेक्ट्रिक फील्ड एट ओरिजिन इज द स्टूडेंट दर इज अ वायर अलॉन्ग दी वाई एक्सिस एंड दिस एंड एज एट ए कॉमा जीरो दैट दिस बी ओरिजिन जीरो कॉमा जीरो दिस वायर एक्सटेंड्स अप टू इन्फिनिटी The charge per unit length of the wire has been given to be equal to lambda. We have to, we have to find out the electric field at origin that is zero comma zero. Let us use the help of integration to solve this question. Let at a distance x from the origin there will be a, an infinitesimally small element dx. The charge on dx can be written as lambda into dx, which will be equal to dq. And the electric field due to the small charge can be written. To be equal to k, that is the Coulomb's constant multiplied by dQ divided by x square. So this will be small electric field dE. To find out the total electric field, we can integrate the value of k dQ by x square. That is will be the total electric field, and the integration would occur from a till infinity. Let us substitute the value of dQ, which will be equal to lambda dx divided by x square. Integration from a to infinity. Now, dear students, the integration of dx by x square would be equal to minus one by x. So this will be equal to k lambda minus one by x limits from a to infinity. On substituting the limits, we get a value of k lambda by a. And on substituting the value of k to be equal to one by four pi epsilon naught, we can write down one by four pi epsilon naught a. Into lambda. Now, dear students, assuming lambda to positive, the electric field would be in downward direction, that is, in minus j cap direction. So, the unit vector associated will be minus j cap. And hence, for this question, option number one is the correct answer. Now, let us solve the question number seven. Question seven says that three point charges are placed as shown in the figure. S is a Gaussian surface. Phi is the net flux passing through the surface S, and E be the electric field at point P on the surface. Then, first option, flux phi is due to Q1 and Q3 only. Second option, flux phi is due to Q1 and Q2. Third option, electric field at point P is due to Q1 and Q2 only. And fourth, flux phi is due to Q3 only. Dear students, the answer for this question is option number two. The electric flux through a closed surface, as per Gauss's law, depends only on the enclosed charges. Here in the flux due to Q3 would be equal to zero. So on adding the flux due to Q1, flux due to Q2, and flux due to Q3, we get that this will be equal to actually the flux due to Q1 plus flux due to Q2 only. Option number one is incorrect because it does not mention charge Q2. Option number three. Is also incorrect because the electric field, which is calculated using Gauss's law, or for that matter through any other method, is due to all the charges present. Fourth option is also incorrect because it does not mention charges Q1 and Q2. Therefore, dear students, option number two is the correct answer. Now let us solve the question number eight. The question number eight says A, B, C are three points in electrostatic field. The electric potential is maximum at A. B, C, a fourth option which says that the electric potential is same at all the three points. Dear students, we must remember that in the direction of electric field, the potential decreases. Therefore, the potential at B would be less than potential at C, and that will be less than potential at A, which means that the potential at A would be maximum. And for this question, option number one would be the correct answer. Now, let us solve the question number nine. As per the question, two point charges plus Q and minus Q are placed at points A and B respectively, which are distance two meters apart. C is the midpoint between A and B. The work done by external agent in moving a charge Q slowly along the triangular path CED. 
it is given that AC is equal to BC is equal to BD and K is equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught. Dear students, the work done will be equal to change in potential energy and which will be equal to charge multiplied by the change in the potential, which is charge multiplied by the potential difference. Dear students, since potential is a position dependent quantity, the part does not matter here. We have to just find out the potential at C and the potential at D. Now, dear student, the potential at C would be equal to kq by 1 plus k minus q by 1 which will be equal to 0. The potential at D can be written as kq. Now, this distance will be thrice of 2 that is 3 plus k minus q by 1. So, this will be equal to minus 2 by 3 k q. Now, dear students, the change in potential difference will be Vd minus Vc which will be equal to minus 2 by 3 kq. The charge which is being moved is capital Q. Therefore, the work done will be equal to capital Q into delta V and this will be equal to minus 2 by 3 k small q capital Q which means option number 2 for this question is the correct answer. Now, let us proceed to the question number 10. The question number 10 says the electric potential at point x, y, z is given by V is equal to minus x, y plus z minus z, q, y, x. The electric field E at point 1, comma 0, comma 1 is. It is given that the all quantities are in SI units. Dear students, the electric field can be written as minus del V by del x, i cap minus del V by del y, j cap minus del V by del z k cap. The students here minus del v by del x would be equal to y plus z q y and its value at 1 comma 0 comma 1 would be equal to 0. Similarly, minus del v by del y would be equal to x plus z cube x and its value at 1 comma 0 comma 1 would be equal to 2 minus del V by del Z is equal to minus 1 plus 3 Z square Y X and its value at 1 comma 0 comma 1 turns out to be equal to minus 1 which means that the electric field is equal to 2 J cap minus K cap the units would be Newton per coulomb it means dear students that for this question option number 3 is the correct answer now let us solve the question number 11 